For a lot of people who run, it's a healthy choice or a positive thing, but for some people, it can be about dealing with what they see as a negative body image. And I just wasn't deriving joy from anything because I was so fixated on maintaining, or creating and maintaining this body. My only relationship with exercise was calorie related mm -hmm. and it was always like transactional with myself. That is exactly what was happening with writer, social media influencer and podcaster M. Clarkson. I was so caught up in how I was being perceived. There was nothing positive about it. It was this thing I was doing as a punishment. It was shameful. I was doing it under the cover of darkness and I was doing it because I thought I had to in order to build the, right. In order to be, be a better person, to be a more mm -hmm. beautiful, thinner, happier. This is TRC Meets, where we meet amazing runners with incredible stories. Em, welcome to the Running Channel Meets. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you here. Thank you. I'm going straight in with quoting you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which okay. I feel like is a good place to start. Is it? <laughs> so one quote that me and Rick found that we loved is, it's not your dream body if you hate the life you have to sustain it. I wish I'd come up with that. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> but yeah, no, I do love that. It's Why not mine. do you love that so much? Because I spent so much of my life chasing this one aesthetic and fitness was definitely tied up into that. Like I had this perception of fitness and of sort of goals and for what my life would be and, and how it would look when I got to that place. And it was thinness, like this whole society, you know, every, mm. but every woman will tell you the same thing. Like when I'm thin, I'll be happy. Yeah. And my whole relationship with exercise was so tied up in that. And actually... For a little while, certainly with obviously like heaps of hindsight and old age, now I can look back and be like, I did kind of have the dream body, I guess, for a while, but I had it for like a minute. I hated it because I didn't think I was thin enough. And it's only now that I've like, I'm way later and I've had like a kid and, you know, like I, I just really love chocolate and pasta and can I swear? Yeah. And shit. <laughs> that I just, I, I look back at that time and I think, shit, she was so unhappy. Like, and I look back at the, the smaller versions of myself and it's not that small is bad and it's not that there was mm. anything wrong with that. It was just my mindset was so messed up with it and it was such an unhealthy place to be. And it was my, my relationship with fitness was so entangled up into that. And I just wasn't deriving joy from anything because I was so fixated on maintaining or creating and maintaining this body that it was just... What, it was just it was just like a smaller version of the vessel that I'm in. It was not it meant nothing mm. except that it took up all my time. Yeah. So I don't know if you've watched it, but recently a show has come onto Netflix called Fat Friends. No. And it's from like two thousand and five or like ages ago. And yeah. watching it is so interesting because it's like so encompassing of what I grew up with yeah. as like diet culture mm -hmm. and it's that whole sentence of like nothing tastes as good as skinny feels I literally beg to differ so many times yeah <laughs> but like I feel like for a lot of people like that was my reason for starting running like was yeah. that your reason oh my god 100% like my I, it's really tr I trigger warning myself because it's not you know lovely to listen to but it is relatable to so many women tragically my only relationship with exercise was calorie related mm -hmm. and it was always like transactional with myself like I can tell you the calorie content of a packet of Maltesers or whatever it would be and I would eat them and then I'd be like well I have to go and run that to, mm. and I'd just do it on a treadmill and I would like run until I did it wasn't the distance it wasn't the endorphins it wasn't the challenge it wasn't anything beyond that very specific number and as I got older it was this it was the same except worse because I kind of had integrated this great level of shame into my into the, the relationship that I'd formed with myself and with running and I remember I used to I used to run around the apartment block that I lived in with my then boyfriend now husband and it was like under the cover of darkness and I would just run around the block and there was a pub on the corner and every time I got there I'd be like oh bollocks and if I was <laughs> walk, well, I'd be like walking and walking and like spluttering and whatever and then I'd have to just run past them because I'd think oh god they're gonna judge me and I was just everything was just so right. I was so caught up in how I was being perceived there was nothing positive about it it was this thing I was doing as a punishment it was shameful I was doing it under the cover of darkness and I was doing it because I thought I had to in order to build the, right. in order to be, be a better person be a mm. more beautiful thinner happier because I thought I'd be like so you were always running then you've always been a runner well no, I mean when I say running I <laughs> yeah, sort of, but it would be like around the block and I I didn't have a watch, I didn't track it. It wouldn't be far, it wouldn't be yeah. I think the first time I ever ran any real distance. I mean god, I remember it was my husband that got me into running, really, in in a in a fun way. 
And I remember the first time I ran a mile without stopping. And that was years after I actually started running because I never, it wasn't about the running. It was about the sweating. It was about the shame. It was about the, you know, it mm. wasn't, it, I wasn't running in the way that I describe running now. Um, so I don't think I ran a mile without stopping until maybe 2015, maybe 16. And then my mom made me run a half marathon with her and I'd like never done anything like never it. Never trained. It was horrible. Yeah, it was absolutely awful. So when did the couch to 5K start? That started after I had a baby. So I ran horrendously, hated it, hated all of it, had a really bad relationship with myself. And then my mum in 2012, age 50, ran, did an Ironman out of wow. nowhere. That's she was annoying, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? And she'd been a complete couch potato. Like we were not an active family and she just completely yeah. changed her life in one year. And it was awesome. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was just epic and so inspiring. And she was very involved with Help for Heroes. She's one of the founder patrons of Help for Heroes. And every year she did these big bike rides. And one year, in, in, when I was in 2012, she said, will you come and do this bike ride? Or 2013, will you come and do this bike ride with me? And it was like across Europe. It was like 360 miles. And I went and did it. I was so unfit. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. I hated it. But I did it with wounded, sick and injured servicemen and women, Amazing. many of whom didn't have legs to ache, you know, like, and I, it put all of my problems into perspective. I was just like, well, what the fuck have I got to complain about, to be honest? And so I got on with it and I loved it. And it was the first positive experience I'd had with exercise, really, and with a really big challenge. And I had this huge sense of pride and yeah. my granny came to watch me finish and it was just like, wow, that was awesome. And did you find as well, like each day of doing that challenge that you weren't at the end of the day thinking like, great, how many calories have I exactly burned Exactly that, exactly that. I was just like, God, I'm fucking starving. Give me everything. <laughs> I mean, you just eat all day because you're so hungry because you've done this amazing thing. And I did it for the next few years. Um, and then I didn't start running. I started running in 2000. And I did my first marathon in 2019, having started running kind of 2015, 16. And then I did my first marathon in Edinburgh with my friend Steve, who was one of the wounded guys I knew him through Help for Heroes. Um, and him and I did that together. And then randomly I finished it and then I got asked to do New York by New Balance or in Intersport with New Balance. Like the week after I finished, I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Awful. Um, <laughs> really? So I did that. And then I did an ultra during COVID because I just really got into it. And then- Oh gosh, you're one of those. One of those. Then I had a baby <laughs> um, and I had a really rough pregnancy. I had HG when I was pregnant. So I right. just didn't move. I was really, really sick. Lost all my, lost a lot of my fitness. And then I had a C-section, emergency C-section, which you can't just go running again. No, so it no. took 17 weeks before I could run again. Yeah, my wife had an emergency C-section as well. How did she yeah. find, was she all right? Uh, there well, the... She, the, afterwards it was brutal. And mentally. Yeah, just and like, inject, oh. in, uh, injecting her every night. Yeah, oh God, I'd forgotten. In the tummy. <laughs> I'd literally forgotten. I was just like, she was just going to me. Don't, aren't you scared of needles? I was like, no, bang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, that bit, you're kind of in a blur. I'd actually completely yeah. forgotten about that. But the, I was getting in so frustrated. In the postnatal care, that, you know, like six weeks, they're like, yeah, yeah, crack on, do what you want. It's yeah. like, surely not. <laughs> like, no, you open. can't do anything. Um, um, so w at what point do you describe yourself as a runner? When did you like make that mark? <laughs> Probably not until my ultra. Really? Because it was the first one that I kind of loved. Mm. I, I really struggled with Edinburgh. It's really hard. I don't, I just, I mentally, I, I couldn't get on with it. And I've had such imposter syndrome. And I also, I never looked like what I thought a runner would look like. I've had such a complicated relationship with my body that's now so positive, but it well, was positive as it can be for, you know, a postnatal woman in, who grew up in the noughties. But I think 2019, 20, I was like, what do I, who do I think I am doing these runs? This is ridiculous. Like, and I was still so slow, which no, you know, no biggie, whatever. Yeah. And then during 2020, I started my community, the Have A Goes, the Hags. And it's all about just having a go and having it's fun. It's your run club. It's yeah, my, yeah. Yeah. It's my, yeah, fitness in general. They, we do running, but we do other stuff as well. And yeah, when I, when I had the Hags and, and I started hanging out with them and talking to them and communicating with them, I did my ultra with their support. And I just was like, oh, sod it, I'm a runner. I'm running, I'm a runner. And I just, I got this really positive space with it. And I mm. just stopped caring about pace and I stopped beating myself up. And I just started having so much more fun. And I love the ultra for that because it's not pace. No one cares about anything. Yeah, it's, it's that yeah. A classic thing of like, if you tell, tell someone, oh, I've run a marathon, the first question is usually, oh, what time did you do? Yeah. If you say you've run an ultra, people yeah. are like, uh, uh, oh, uh, how, how far is that then? That's Are you okay? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly that. And it complete. And I needed that for myself. 
I, mm. I actually ran my fastest marathon, and I'm still a slow runner, but I ran the quickest marathon time was within my ultra. Wow. Because I just didn't care. Like I was, And I did it on my own. I did it during COVID. Like, my mum ran a few miles with me. My husband ran a few miles with me. My friend Mike ran a few miles with me. And I really didn't know Mike that well, which was great. <laughs> Good Who's on Mike? you, Mike. Exactly. <laughs> no one knows yeah. who Mike is. He's still running. <laughs> yeah. Mike, you can stop. Um, but he's, you know, like, we're not really, really good friends, which is great. That's exactly who you want to run with, because you can't be like, oh, God, this is really hard. You just have to chit-chat. Mm-hmm. So I just chit-chatted for like 10 miles with Mike and ate loads and it was awesome Loved so then it. you go from huge high I'm guessing you run an ultra yeah. you consider yourself a runner then you go through pregnancy and before that yeah. I broke my jaw I had my jaw yes. broken the week after the ultra how did so you break ha- the jaw they, the doctor said I had it broken I had it re- like it broke the top jaw broken into three because I had a problem with my airway so they broke my top jaw and I'm glad it was it. planned yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, actually, I'm not. It was awful. I'd sort of rather just... Like, I find an unplanned jaw break is a bit along. more painful. Because yeah, like, You'd be surprised. That was kind of still in lockdowns as yeah. well. Because like yeah. so I remember so following of... along with that and being like, some people think being stuck inside is bad. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. yeah, had your jaw wired shut for 10 weeks. That was awful. That was absolutely awful. Massively underestimated. I thought it was going to be like a tooth removal. It was not. <laughs> um, so I did the ultra. That I did the ultra 21st of January, I think. And then thereabouts 30 no it was a few days like 30th of jan maybe and then on the first of second of february i had my jaw broken wow so going from like i love this running is amazing to then i'm guessing no exercise everything stops yeah. how do you deal with that oh, it was great though because it made me really look forward to it again and when i went back out i was like i can't get my my when i went on my first five weeks after surgery i went for a run and my jaw was still wired shut you know, like you can't care about pace <laughs> when your jaw's wired shut. You're just so happy to be out. And I've been stuck on my ass for like, you know, five weeks or whatever. And I was just so it's happy to be out. It's a good to way to become a nose breather, I'm guessing. Or quite difficult. No, it was really blood. It was full of blood. It was oh. foul. It oh, was God. absolutely foul. Everything about that was foul. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that did set me up quite well for the pregnancy thing. Because again, you get very... It, the temptation is to get so frustrated. Like you're mm. injured, you can't do it and whatever. And, and do then, you think because you'd already had like a period where you like you just couldn't do it did then that make it easier in pregnancy when you had to then stop and then come back again? I think so I think with pregnancy I was so sick I just didn't even care like I wanted to be one of these like swish swish you know like running with the bump it's just it was never gonna be me no severe morning sickness as well I yeah just... I couldn't I couldn't I was too ill you know mm. I was on medication um I was on yeah I was on medication three times a day every day from for the Wow. Dura- for the duration of my pregnancy there was just no it wasn't even really a priority and it was a bit depressing you know watching everything just go soft but I was like well <laughs> I'm making a kid so and it's fair to say you've had a complicated journey with, with running. running yeah, yeah. A little bit. yeah. 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 we've taken some turns <laughs> but I love it and it's been so good for me you know like this it set me free from all the the calorie the the self-hate stuff it just I didn't that's so far away from where I am now with it I'm yeah. just so grateful for it now and when you go out for a run now, like what's the what's the thing driving you to run? Oh God, I just love it. I'm just so lucky to be able to do it. I'm so lucky to be able to do it. Like I, <clears throat> maybe it's the jaw, maybe it's the, you know, maybe it's my own the new jaw. time. Yeah, the new jaw. <laughs> maybe it's like, the, you know, the times I've had to be on my bottom and whatever. But realistically, it's not that. It's like there are people all over the place who would just love it, who would just love to be able to it go is, for a run. It is, isn't it? It's about, because I, I, I had a, Sarah's going to laugh at me, I had an osteotomy, I don't mention but that much. But she never tells never me about that. that. No, uh, I'm yeah, surprised yeah. you made it this I've, far through. I've got, I've, got, I've got 14 minutes in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was out for two years. I was on oh, crutches no. for almost almost a year, well, nine, ten months. And like, Sarah and I went for our first run together after two years and we went up in a park in North London and that feeling when you you haven't had it for so long mm. getting back to moving at a faster pace than a walk is like nothing else it's if so you've good. lost it yeah. if you've lost it yeah. and then you get it back yeah. it's amazing yeah you don't take it for granted again yeah. and I think yeah the, the perspective shift it's so freeing as well even maybe Help for Heroes has been a very was a very good mm. place for me to start because because it, you are immediately thrust into a perspective that we don't have enough, that we are so lucky to be physically able to do it. Yeah. But I think I've also, I don't know, maybe through my job, I I, I used to, I actually trained for London Marathon with uh, Deborah James, Bow Babe, who died now coming on two years ago. And who I was so lucky to call a friend. 
and we didn't she ended up doing it with another friend of ours Emma remotely and I did the half because I just chickened out but it was the year that Covid all got postponed and stuff and um, sorry that Covid postponed the marathon and I'm this is my marathon place just five years late <laughs> but having run with Debs now when I run the same routes and I just think she would do anything to she loved it she would do anything I'm so lucky like, yeah. I'm still here I'm still here and like what a, what a treat it is yeah. to just be able to do this and that's just awesome like, I think a lot of people though get I am definitely so guilty of like training for London Marathon I get so bogged down into like that run wasn't long enough yeah. or that run wasn't far enough or that wasn't the pace I wanted to hit yeah. or like oh my losing fitness oh what is my watch telling me Bloody like I think one. ignore your watch <laughs> yeah, I, know. <laughs> I don't know you <laughs> but I think for so many people you can get fixated on like whether that's a positive thing or a negative thing like you can get so fixated on like little things like that yeah. do you still ever find yourself going like yeah oh that run wasn't oh, what I wanted 100%. it to be 100% yeah when I was training for I mean this is postpartum fitness is a different situation Running after a baby is a completely well. Training for marathon after a baby is a completely different mm. sport, completely. And yes, I am. I'm actually running faster since having a baby than I was running before. Oh wow! I'm feeling stronger. I'm running better, which is unreal. Was that because you just been training? Properly? I've been training. Or is really that because you've got less time, so you have to run? You, you have to <laughs> be more efficient. You, you have to be more like, efficient. You definitely have to be more efficient, and that is a hundred percent a consideration i've also been using cooper the training app which i'm obsessed with like and they have worked with the postpartum thing with the time thing because they tell you to go running for like 100 minutes they don't tell you the distance they tell you go running for 100 minutes today go running for 110 minutes go running for whatever it is it's so good for me mentally to be like, I'm like this is the time who ca they don't care about the distance yeah mm. these are the professionals and they're telling me to run for this many minutes and that's fab so that's been really helpful it's less daunting as well it's gr it's great and you're counting down rather than if you're like I'm going on a 20 mile run it's like oh Christ and you're clocking up the miles and they're taking forever if you're on a 200 minute run or whatever it's like we well, just count down the minutes and that's mm. lovely I love for me especially like for some people as well like the if you're targeting like a five or a six or a seven hour marathon like it's not good to go out and do 20 miles necessarily no. because if you're going out for like five mm. or six hours a few weeks before you haven't got enough time to recover no. so that's when like having those amount of minutes is really good yeah. because it's teaching you that time on feet yeah without being like oh i haven't done my 20 exactly. mile everything's gonna go wrong so i've not felt like a failure at all within this training which is the first time and, and i really have to credit cooper for that because that's been a complete i, I wouldn't have trained like this without them but i think something that my husband says to me every time I go running is this time is for you. And I think when you have a baby, I've been breastfeeding until last month. So I've been training for the marathon while breastfeeding. If you, you don't get time for yourself as a new mum. You just don't. And I'm so touched out. I, no. I, I've been sleeping with her literally attached to me all night. I'm so tired. I'm so overwhelmed. And I just get this like a hundred minutes or whatever it is in the day. And it's mine. Mm -hmm. so it's been a lot harder to feel negative about what I'm doing because I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be out. I'm so proud of myself for the journey. But yeah, I've also had some awful ones. Like I did a 16 miler with mastitis and it was horrendous. I was oh, so gosh. miserable. Is that yeah. when the breast milk gets stuck? Yeah. Did I see that? Did you go for the run with cabbage down your bra? No, I went to the <laughs> doctor with cabbage in <laughs> my bra and she was like, she was like can I examine the nipple and I was like yeah yeah sure and then I showed it and then she was like why is there a cabbage leaf I was like <laughs> she was like can you put it in the bin I was like okay so she just walk of shame with this like so, like, like hang on why was there a cabbage leaf because it was on Google that I had to try the milk out <laughs> did I would have done this set. did it not work well, I don't know she was like I think maybe just take the antibiotics from now on I was like yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough what am I going to do with the rest of the yeah, cabbage I so like, gotta... <laughs> brilliant I'll eat that then will I um, but yeah anyway so lol um, but yeah that was awful But she, and she was like well maybe don't run and I was like lady I have got to run a marathon in a minute like I, <laughs> that was simply not an option so I did it and I felt horrendous and it was awful and I hated it and that was my only really bad run. I've always struggled with 16 miles though and that was well so when you get over it you're fine mm -hmm. but I don't think less is fine as well just a 16 mile mark I right. just hate I think it's because you know you've got 10 miles after to, to go yeah, yeah yeah and that's just yeah I've always really struggled with it so I think that was always going to be a bad run mastitis or not but then I did 19 miles the week after and I loved it so that is the best thing about running you can have like an absolutely shocker of a run yeah. and then the next one it's like oh what yeah. was I worrying about yeah. so much better drama queen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how was training for this year's marathon did you enjoy all of it the training 
Honestly, yeah. I mean, yeah. Obviously. Do you feel like you push yourself hard I enough? I push myself mad hard. Yeah. I have felt I felt disappointed in the the final three weeks because I went away with a baby. My my kid does not sleep. She's just it's just really not yeah, in I've her. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, it's just yeah. not. Not in a I don't get it. They, I know. they don't realise how much fun it is. Hey, you've only got 24 hours in a day. You need to party the whole way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah I, I don't know. I, I can't reason with her. She's just not having it. Um, so it's been it, it's been hard. And the, yeah, the last three weeks before the marathon weren't great. She, or the last four weeks even, she, we went away, jet lag, she didn't sleep. Then I got neurovirus, which was horrendous. Uh, Never had yeah. that before. That was a shock. Really? Just, <laughs> only, that. You start getting stuff that you never knew existed when you start having babies, no, I've no, realised. No. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. Everyone else got it. My apart entire baby. family, apart yeah. from her. I was like, the oh, wow. I know, what a queen. She's a superhuman. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, so that was awesome. I mean, that was a relief because that's the one thing I really couldn't have handled was <laughs> her going down too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the the last one, and, I, and I've been really, I had to really try and like not beat myself up for, because that does, ha- life happens, you know what I mean? Like, so... Yeah, and not beat myself up for that. Um, but generally, yeah. And like, I have no expectation for this one. Like, it, I'm just, I mean, like, I had major abdominal surgery 14 months ago. I've had a child attached to my body since then. Mm. Like, it's it's a lot, it, you know. And I just think, yeah, I just I have massive respect for myself that I've just done it and I've showed up. But also for my husband, because this is, you can't, you can, I can't, I've not just done that on my own like yeah it's like a proper team it's a real team effort and I'm really aware of the sacrifice that he or the the step up he's had to make to facilitate it because it's a big sacrifice for my time and and my energy and stuff so you know I'm just so grateful to him and to myself and even to the baby for letting me go what's what's been your nutritional (laughs) journey if you like with running because when you started out you weren't you just threw anything in but now you, it's yeah. quite focused now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It. Yes. Hydration was a really big issue with the mm. breastfeeding. I was drinking five liters a day, probably, and wasn't even touching the sides. Wow. Which was mad. I felt like I was yeah. drowning, but just, <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Um, so really trying to focus on hydration, like rehydration stuff, um, and protein. I don't eat meat, so that's the like you have to d- just think extra special hard. Also, as a new beans, mom, like beans, beans, yeah, beans, yeah. Oh, <laughs> more boring, beans, boring beans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, tofu. I actually really like tofu, which is useful. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not that hard. It's just harder, yeah. particularly when you've got a baby, because you just have to think more. Um, and yeah, so I, I wasn't, and I wasn't fueling until I wasn't, I forced myself to eat before I go. And I was trying to do what I see everyone on Instagram doing and eat porridge and oats and overnight. I, no, I don't like them. I don't like them. Oh, very nice. neither. No, overnight what? oats are disgusting. What the hell? They're so <laughs> Controversial so opinion. Cloggy and cloggy Warm and porridge, fine, but cold. Even no. still, even still, I had a bagel before my 19 mile. I had a bagel with almond butter and banana, and I was like that was a treat. Yeah. And I had gels every 45 minutes, and I ate jelly babies, and I had a bar of some kind and I was like oh there we go <laughs> that's how I meant to feel um because yeah. I'm crap at nutrition I'm just so bad at it so um yeah I've been trying to focus on eating more I'm carb loading yeah I've been carb loading way more and and really trying to because you really feel it you know the mm. more in tune you get with your body if you try eat running when you've not eaten properly like after neuro trying to do those runs back I just felt like I had lead in my legs neuro is just brutal isn't it's it? the worst I can't, I can't stress it enough. It was it's, just... You feel like it's the end. <laughs> it felt, yeah, it felt terminal. I'm going to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't good. Yeah. yeah, it was bleak. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Yeah, hot, like, yeah, yeah. oh God, yeah. Just, and it's just... It was just I did a, buy a, a new selection of buckets after that experience. Did you? Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not being sick in the... What's it? No, the, you, know the those one pa- you know those one pound uh, buckets you get from B&Q, the orange ones as you go in? <laughs> got a load of those oh now. Oh my gosh, that is... Got a one for the whole family. That's a large bucket. Yeah, yeah. Each baby's got one by their door. Is that the way that's a social media? media thing of like are you the person that uses the kitchen saucepan <laughs> for that it or are you what I realised when I was pregnant with HG how many times I was sick I was like do you know how many times I've used that same mixing bowl <laughs> like, as I'm like mixing up dinner I'm like I've thrown up in this bowl so many times <laughs> That's what when I was a kid we just had like one sauce pan, yeah. and then to this day I'm still like oh, mm. <laughs> like that, I don't mm. want to look at that. So you're running now. If you think back to like you when you first started running, going past the pub, like mm. what's the major difference in like when you go out running now compared to then? I'm happy. I'm happy. I I'm not doing it, but I don't believe you can do anything positive born in hate. I don't mm. think you can 
you can hate yourself enough to happiness. You, it doesn't work. If it, and if it did work, it would have worked. And it didn't. I, I did it for so long. And it just doesn't. And now I love myself enough to look after myself and to treat myself and to celebrate myself. And that is, it's night and day. It, like it, it's, it's, I'm a whole new person just nice. on that one switch. Mm. And it's, it, it, nothing else matters. And it's so hard to reason that with someone in the thick of diet culture and self-hate and body image and disordered eating. It's so hard to just, to just say, try something else. Just try, try. You don't have to mm. love yourself, but you don't have to do this. You don't have to hate yourself to, to, to exist. Like it doesn't have to be this way. And yeah, I just, I think, I don't know, there's things about running that go out with my dog. Like I went out with this morning for two miles with my dog. And it was just a joy. It's just joy. I don't care. I don't care how long it took. I don't care how far I went. I don't care. It was a Cooper run. So they just said 25 minutes. I was like, 25 minutes with my best girl. What a treat. That, and that's a Dreaming. completely different yeah, person yeah. to the one that was, I had to wait till 9 p.m. So it was pitch black, which by the way is so unsafe, um, tragically. But like, you yeah, know. We've talked about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the worst thing, you know, the society bullies, shames women to the point that they feel that they have to do it under the cover of darkness, which then puts their literal lives in danger. How mm. tragic is that? Like what horrible state of affairs that we've ended up there, that we're so scared to be seen trying, that we that we'll put ourselves at this risk. I hate it. Yeah. And for anyone who might be listening to this, like resonating more with you when you first started running of like, yeah. oh, maybe my relationship with it isn't that positive what would your advice be to like make the switch to turn something that can be positive from something that you're doing out of hate into something you're doing out of love? I think it really depends on the person because I could say, you know, I could suggest go, go running with a friend and you'd be like, no, I'd rather die. Sometimes <laughs> running with other people is horrendous and it's so vulnerable and exposing and you hate it. So it depends because it's got to be something that gives you a flicker of something that mm. isn't dark. You need to find something that makes it fun and it might not be running and I'm sorry to say that here but it might not be running some yeah, people wrong just podcasting. I know but we've got, to, we've got to be honest with the people they might not like it and they might find something else they might love dancing or cycling they might yeah. it might not be that and it's like you know we have this one ideal of what we think a good runner is and it's running a marathon and, and doing it in four hours it isn't a good runner is one that enjoys yeah. it you know what though it's mm. all become more social though the whole yeah. uh, running is compared to even five years ago that when we started the running channel it's so much more social yeah. now. Sarah and I have just mm. been going around the country to these run clubs that we've been meeting up uh, you know going for a run and then there's like drinks as a party yeah. people are meeting other people that they wouldn't have met before people are having relationships because they're running oh. like it's like you know it is different now to yeah. five years ago because there's a whole and it's not just the industry that's grown up around it but it's also there's a there's almost like a uh, an ability to to meet other people and and it's become like a community more yeah. i think running yeah and i think the thing that the scary thing for people is that they think that they can't come to that because they're not good enough yet and that would yeah. have been me that definitely would have been even even listening to that i still think oh god i couldn't come to one of their running things because i wouldn't be good enough well, and you, they'd you all leave be me too behind el elitist basically. yeah well i yeah that's my and that's not a reflection of anybody's running community yeah. that's me and my imposter syndrome still i you know whatever it is i'm like oh god no everyone will leave me behind and i'll be the slowest and how embarrassing will that be and yeah. and, mm. and, 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 and 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 you do that and that's a lot what a lot and that's it, the biggest barrier i think is what people you know the 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 the, the biggest barrier for a lot of people is what they think other people are going to think of them it's hard as well because i so i try and try and try to persuade my mom to go to park run and every single time she's always like no i'd come last yeah. but i feel like it's that hard thing of like if you are starting out and you are that little bit slower, that's a concern. That was my biggest concern yeah. when I started mm. running. Then when you get a little bit more accomplished in running, it doesn't even need to be that you're getting faster. You go like, I don't care. Yeah. I will come last. Yeah. But it's that hard step of like the people who are just starting out. That is a fear. And that might be true, but like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like we, we do run clubs and it is like, does not matter what your pace is. We will be there with you finishing off and doing it. I think you just have, it's like that little bit of bravery yeah. to just get there yeah. and do it. I think you're right, Sarah. And I think actually being last at Parkrun, it looks quite good fun to me. I mean, you're There's enjoying no it far longer than the people who <laughs> well, are. Yeah, exactly. Is that like, yeah, is that yeah. like type one versus type two fun? Yeah. <laughs> like, the people, 
people at the front are still having fun, but not during. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something that we say with the hags a lot with the have goes is that if you're being chased by a pet a bear, it just doesn't matter how fast you're running. And I think that perspective shift is like, yeah, but really just push yourself on why. Why do you care? Why do you why do you care though? Genuinely, why do you care? Like, what do you think the strangest disapproval is going to do? Which you've made up, mm. by the way, because they're not disapproving. Why? And if you really push yourself back, you end up being like, oh, yeah, I'm being a real weirdo because it's like I've completely made this all up and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing stopping me. I can do this. And, yeah. And also, yeah. especially with stuff like Parkrun, like if you care so much that you don't want people to know that, there are hundreds around the country. Just go to a different one every single week. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Like, where did <laughs> Keith go? <laughs> yeah. Just do it all. Yeah. I'm also just going to like shamelessly plug it because that's the point of the Have a Goes, which is the community that I run. Um, this is the point is that we never leave a hag behind. And it's chill. Like, it's really chill. It's for beginners. It's come and do a triathlon with us. Come and do a run with us. If you've never done a run before, that's the point. None of them have. None of us have. And mm-hmm. the ones that have will look after you. And that's the point of that, too. Mm. It's that the people who've done it before, you know, my mum, 10 time Iron Man, is like, she loves it. She waits at the beginning front of the triathlon, telling everyone where to put their stuff and how to do this and, and where did, should they be wearing socks and, you know, all of these, like, do you wear a sports bra and do you try? So all these stupid things that you've got no one to ask. I that's don't the, know the answer to any of those questions. Exactly. <laughs> that's the point of the hack. Introduce yourself now as hi, 10 time, I'm a... Hi, t- 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 yeah. Yeah. No, I just introduced her as that. No, she's like, leave yeah. me alone. Um, no, she'll tell you that she didn't, she had a she, she had a bulging disc in her spine for one of them and never, and didn't finish the run on one. So she's like, well, I only really did nine and a half. I'm like, I think uh, at this point. I think that counts. Yeah. What, it's, you showed up to 10. Yeah, yeah exactly. What yeah. is a hag? It, they're having a go. Oh, right. Having a go. Goes. Right. I was like, I was going through my head. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. My mum came up with the name. Right. Then, so, yeah, we've got 30,000 hags now. Maybe 40,000 hags. We've got a lot of hags. And we just go and do stuff together. We don't leave hags behind. We, we, we're we trying to change fitness events so that it's not always just like really, it's not what we think. You, you, know, you close your eyes and you picture a cycling event and it's full of middle-aged white dudes. Like we're trying to change that and and make it a space that you can come and be bad at stuff or you can come and have a go and it doesn't matter. It's just no pressure. It's chill. You've got people in your corner. Even if you just want to do it online, you know, we've got the community, we've got the Instagram and people just chat and they're lovely to each other and it's so fun. I love my hags. They're the best people in the world. Awesome. Yeah. So good. And it is all about just having a go really. That's what life is. Yeah. Just have a go and if it's awful and you hate it, then just that's fine. But you had a go. <laughs> yeah. And like, I don't know, I just, I, like, God love my mum. What, like, what a woman. But starting at 50, like, ow, you know, like, ow, it's, <laughs> at yeah. least try it now and if I hate it now, then I'm like, okay, well, you know, don't have to do that because, you know, she found it at 50 and loved it and then it's like, oh, but my knees hurt and, and whatever and it's, I don't want, I don't know. I just, I wanted to try. I wanted to have a go. And, you know, some stuff stuck and some, I don't cycle anymore because my bum hurts, but I love running. So (laughs) then that's just that. Like, and I just had a go and it stuck. So yeah, I don't know. I'm always. So with running then, London Marathon, what's next post London Marathon? Any other challenges that you've got on your horizon or will it be run and enjoy it and keep doing it? I have always wanted to run a 10K in under an hour. I've just nice. always wanted to be able to do that. I did for the first time postpartum, I did a 5K in under half an hour and I was honestly astounded. I'm a stone heavier than what I was before. I've got more responsibilities. I'm older, I'm more tired and I you've still got, You've got it. that in the tool bag. I know. Under an hour. I know. You definitely I know, got it. I know. And yeah. that's all I want really for myself because I just, I don't have it. I'm not competitive with anybody else, but I just really want to show myself because I would like to have more kids and I suspect I will have HD yeah. again. Um. I'd really like to remind myself what I'm capable of and show any mums actually who follow me what they're capable of too. And I think with the marathon, that's just been more than enough. I can't, even if I don't, you know, even if I crawl the whole thing, I didn't care. I didn't care. I've done it. I've, I've, I'm so proud of myself. So mm. I don't really have anything it's possible. else. Yeah. I mean, anything's possible. I, mean, yeah. I got arrested at last night at the proms once. So yeah. like, anything's possible. Who said you got arrested last night? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, waiting yeah. till now to tell me. him out. <laughs> To come to the podcast. That's what I thought you were saying as well. And I was like, wow, you've had quite a 24 hours. Jeez. Uh, no, that's what another did you story. do? Um, they thought I was ticket touting. I wasn't. Oh. I was de arrested. De arrested. Oh, no, that's <laughs> even more embarrassing. Yeah, I'd was. be like, no, just commit to just this. Like, look, go, <laughs> no, go just, the whole yeah, thing. No, go just, the whole thing. Yeah, Set nothing, a few spare tickets. Yeah, I mean, nothing seriously. Nothing more embarrassing than having a handcuff. Of all the things off. to get arrested for. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What a segue. Well, there you go. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. That was incredible. Well, best yeah. of luck, and let us know when you get under the hour because you absolutely will. Yeah, Thank do. You. Thank yeah, you. you have to be. We have we, every week people email in some questions. Maybe your question could be, "How could I go under an hour at a ten k?" 
<laughs> just run, run, yeah, 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 help. <laughs> How? <laughs> All right, thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks.